Hey, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to talk about hashes in Ruby C API. Now, hashes are kind of associative arrays which stores a key and a value pair, which is faster when we want to refer an item with the key instead of an index like an array. For example, if I open my terminal and launch IRB and create a couple of nested arrays and have A5 in the first array, and b6 in the secondary we have created something like a hash so if i do zero we get a5 so we have an associative array and if i do zero one we get five if i do zero zero we get a as you can see we have something like a hash but this is not quite a hash but to search for an item you have to do something like this find x and let's do x0 equals to equals to a so this will find the first item if we want to get the second item we will have to do b6 but there's a problem with this approach imagine we have an array that has maybe a couple of million items which can really slow down your program that might take maybe a couple of seconds right to search through the array so in case of hashes we can just do this a5 b6 of course you know what are hashes but i am talking about the real world applications because so i have actually seen many people using hashes instead of arrays and arrays instead of hashes in multiple cases that are not ideal so i just want to clear your concepts about hashes if you have any problem with that so if we have a hash like this and if i do a we get the value associated with a and if i do b we get the value associated with b but this doesn't loop over so if i have a million items in the hash maybe a couple of billion items in fact if i want to get something from the middle of the hash it won't iterate over so when we are creating a hash we are creating an index of these items so when we refer b so it doesn't loop over the hash it just gets the value of b so that way it is faster but in in many cases you need hashes as well for speed you can get away with arrays of course but hashes will make things faster so anyway without any further ado let's get started with the c extension to create one hash let's first start with creating a directory called abcd okay abcd and cd into it and create a file called xtcon.rb and require mkmf and then create make file called maybe hash because we are learning hashes and then let's create a c file called hash.c it doesn't matter and include ruby.h and then create our function void init hash to create one hash you can do this value hash equals to rb hash new and a hash is created if i set it to a global variable called a and protect it and if i compile and run our code make sure your quotes are single not double here because if you provide double quote it will be a bash variable so we will do p a which means a bash variable and if i run this code we get an empty hash which is really exciting now let's do something else so we have an empty hash here but if you want to set key value pairs you will do this rb hash asset but i cannot find documentation about rb hash asset like the official guide and silver hammer guide but we do have one uh, article covering this hash so as you can see we can do rb hash asset to set the key and value pairs if i do rb hash asset and give the hash here as first argument and the second argument should be the key which may be anything into fix 5 we will create a 5 and let's set it to 6 uh, do know that we are not going to do something very meaningful in this tutorial 
but in the later tutorials we need meaningful hashes okay so we are going to create probably a hash like this five which is referring to six if i compile and run our code we get five which is mapped to six and if i do maybe five we get six here if i again edit the code and if i set something else let's copy the code and let's do a string here so to create a string we'll do rb str new cstr let's call it hello with capital h and if i compile and run our code we get hello which is mapped to six but if you want to create something like a symbol for example you will do rb in turn and wrap that in id to sim so in this case we are getting the id of hello and converting that to a symbol if i com compile and run this code we get hello map to six but what if i don't do our id to sim if i don't do this and compile and run our code we get something like a integer which doesn't mean anything in our case so we have to do id to sim and this is very important when you are trying to create symbols in ruby c extension now that's all about hashes and how you can create hashes but this is really a small tutorial right and let's not make it that smaller which is really boring so let's do something very very silly so we are going to create one hash that will store the timestamp of created objects when we call the function for example to start off let's code along with me and we'll maybe do something interesting but not that meaningful it's very very silly stuff sorry i had to pause the video for some reason now we have no files in here and i will create another xtconvertrb file again and require mkmf you can you can also do this because uh, that will be better for you and if i do create make file let's call it time in this example we are going to define a method called time on kernel module and if i define something on kernel module you might know that we define it on all objects so we can call time dot time on any object like string or maybe array and we will get the array back with some time maybe okay so so without any further ado let's create our c file it's going to be interesting but it is very very silly it doesn't have any purpose in real life we are just learning how we can create hashes so we want to create the c file called um let's call it um let's call it time.c and include ruby.h we are also going to include a library called time.h which is default on linux distributions as far as i know and let's create our void init function let's patch our kernel module to patch our kernel module we have to define the kernel module to define the kernel module we have to write value kernel equals to rb define module and we can define modules like that so we will do kernel and then we are going to define the method time on kernel so if i do rb define method and give kernel here and let's define the method called time which will call the function called time we have to write that function now and it will take no argument because it will work on the self object so now we have to create the function called time that will return one hash so we have to create a hash first and then we will return the hash so if i compile and run this code
let's call it something else because we are having compilation error for that so we want to call it maybe return time maybe something like that i don't know if i compile and run our code we get an empty hash because we have nothing here but we want to return the time to create one time object in ruby we can do this and the rb time new takes two arguments which is the offset from epoch and the first one is the second offset and the second one is the nanosecond offset so if i run this code we get 1970 which is the epoch time and we get 530 back because i am sitting in india and we have plus 530 gmt so we are going to have 530 here but let's advance the time by 3600 seconds maybe we get 630 so as you can see it is the offset so if i do maybe 50 nanoseconds here it is something like 0 0.00005 second right so there's the offset but in c we can also create times like this we have to define a struct called time spec which is coming from time.h and let's call it tv for now and to get the time we have to call the get time of day function and pass the address of tv and pass null here so when we call get time of day and pass the address of tv we'll have something like tv dot tv sec and tv dot tv insect members but we want to return that with maybe rb time new here and remove that line so if i compile and run this code again we get uh, the current date and time which is actually i'm recording at 3:43 a.m here so it is 3:43. now as you can see we have a warning here i am not sure from where the warning is coming from but it is working exactly like we want if i again edit the file and maybe return the hash uh, with the time object we can do rb hash asset remember we have to include the object here so if i do value obj we have self here now we have to pass the hash here and the obj here and then the time here now we have to return the hash here if i compile and run our code we get the string mapped with the time so if i do maybe the array here you can see we have an empty array mapped to the time here if i do equals to array and p a dot time you see we have the same array if i do dot keys dot first or maybe zero we have the same array and if i do object id equals to equals to a dot object id you see it is true we can also do a dot equal a it is also true so the object id is exactly same so we are returning the same object here but mapped to the time we can also use hashes here for example if i have a equals to hash we get the hash back we get the hash back so that's a lot to take in we learned how we can create hashes and time as well how we can patch the kernel module and stuff hope you learned something new we didn't do anything meaningful in this tutorial we returned the time here which is not really applicable in real world it might be but um, you may not want to return the hash here so i do thank you for watching and hope that you have a great day